Hello there everyone! Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today we are going to be reviewing Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. Here's the thing about Melissa Albert, and this is the thing I love about her. Her writing is incredibly atmospheric, and if you read um, The Hazelwood and The Hinterlands, um, you know she really does embody a sort of grim fantasy type of atmosphere to her storytelling. It is very gothic. It is very eerie. It is a little unsettling. Like there's something you feel when you're reading it that you're just like chills almost. But her, I know for a fact her writing isn't for everyone. Um, and I think that's because her main characters tend to be very aloof, but there's always a reason, you know, and that is what happened here in this book. I've read a lot of reviews online that are just like, oh, why couldn't it really connect to Ivy as a character? You're not supposed to. And you discover why as the story progresses. In the beginning, she is very aloof. She is little, a little detached. It's like she is hollow, a person waiting to be filled there's just something off about her that you can't quite put your finger on. But you know it has some sort of connection to her mother. It's, I don't really want to ruin it for you because the story does, you know, when you read it, it explains her mother casts a magic on her because they are witches. Her mother did a spell, almost, and... Basically, what she did was, and quite unforgivable, she took much of her daughter's identity away from her, which is why she is very hollow. And that's why I say she's a character that needs to be filled in, because that's what she is. She doesn't have an identity. She's just kind of going through the day very empty. And it is because of her mother, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> she always questions. She's like, why am I like this? Why do I, people think I'm aloof and they think it's fun, but I'm not really aloof. I just don't care. But as the story progresses, you understand why she's like that. It makes sense. And when you get to that part, you're you're angry on her behalf. You're just like, oh my god, Dana is horrible. And Dana is. She's not a good person. She's not a good mother. She very much is a very selfish individual. Everything she does is because she doesn't really want to face the consequences for her actions. Yes, she does do some bad things for the right reasons. But she does them because she doesn't really want to think of an alternative way to solve the problems that she has helped create. And she knows this. She knows she's selfish. She knows she's not a good person. She knows she's a bad person. As the story progresses and as it develops, you're just kind of... Uh, you get angry at Dana. You really do. And she's like this character. She's so full of life. And she does remind me a little bit of Sarah from The Craft. And I'll say this. If you love The Craft, that movie, you're going to like this book because it, it is such The Craft vibes. I mean, when you're reading it, I just got strong, especially when you're in the mom's po um, point of view, because it is dual point of view and it is also dual timelines. When her mom goes missing... Ivy starts investigating, you know, her mom's secrets. And then you are in chapters that go back in time, following Dana and the decisions she made that led up to why she has disappeared now that her daughter is like 16, 17 year old, years old. It's like, what event happened to make her disappear now? pretty much 20 years later. It's really interesting how the story unfolds, all really, and it's just engaging. 
but it is that that timeline you know her mom's timeline is very much from the craft her friend is totally nancy and ruth i, I do like ruth ruth is a sweetheart and i'm just like ruth you can pick better friends pick better friends <laughs> but Diny, D dinah dana is a terrible person and you feel for ivy when you get to that moment where you're just like, oh my God, this is what you did to your daughter? And all because you didn't want to face the consequences for your actions? Like, Jesus, you're you're a bad person. And it's really good that you feel that way. So that's why I'm saying the story explains itself. So you really do have to stick to it. If you're struggling with connecting to the characters, there's a reason. You're supposed to struggle. Melissa Elbert does things with intent. And I like that about her storytelling. I hate when authors kind of just do things for the sake of doing things. Her storytelling, her characterization, her plot structure, it has intent. It moves in a fluid way. Even the dual timelines going from past to present. It flows. It has a fluidity to it. And it doesn't lose that craft, gothic, atmosphere that really drives the story forward it's just really it really is a wonderful story i really did enjoy it i think my final rating for it would be 4.25 i did the math for this one <laughs> i broke it down like writing character development i broke it down and then um averaging it would be 4.25 out of 5 stars. It was a really good book. I really do recommend it, especially if you're looking for a nice witchy read to read during the Halloween seasons or just looking for a nice witchy read in general. This is definitely going to be the book for you. So, on that note, once again, um, thank you all for tuning into this podcast. Please don't forget to like it, subscribe to it, and share with all your book your friends. If you are interested in the book, I will include links in the description on where you can purchase it if you so desire. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. Mm -hmm.